I lost a daughter in a house fire when I was 18 years old, my youngest daughter, on Christmas Eve. That was my breaking point that I never ever thought I would come back from. I was not willing to get past that. My friends would beg me to please participate in Christmas or to not lock myself in my room or to just believe that there was a, a reason for it. Just try to believe in um, something other than being selfish and losing in my loss. I wouldn't do it for anybody, ever. I'm ashamed to say I did not do it for my other children. And this one afternoon and this one person who knew exactly how I felt turned my whole world upside down. We didn't know how receptive the women in the prison environment would be to these same concepts that we're essentially bringing forward in a master's degree program in spiritual psychology. And as it turned out, what a surprise, women in prison are just as human and divine as people who are not in prison. It seems as though whether one is in prison or not makes very little difference. Dear President Holnick, thank you for making the Freedom to Choose workshop available at Valley State Prison for Women. I am honored that you took an interest in my request and so grateful that you made such a wonderful event possible. I would also like to send a very special thank you to the graduates that graciously volunteered their time and expense to come here. I would like to tell you about the weekend as it had a great impact on the participants. I stood in front of our gym with many other women all unprepared for what we would face. The general mood was fear. We were nervous and had no idea what to expect. As I watched the many volunteers walk towards the gym, I prayed so hard that we would find a common ground. As the day progressed, I realized how much we have in common. I honestly thought the volunteers would teach us new insightful methods that we would, in turn, use to communicate beyond the life of our bad choices and low self-esteem. What I did not expect was that we would help them as well. My name is Rhonda Leland. I'm serving almost two life sentences. I'm not eligible for the board until 2036. This workshop started because Rhonda had the courage to write to the president of the university and say, could you please come and give a talk? We could really benefit from that. And in their communication over time, the idea developed to have a whole workshop. And so we're actually here because Rhonda took the initiative. She had the courage to take a risk and to write that letter. So thank you. A group of USM volunteers work in TRIO, which is in groups of three, presenting USM skills in an environment very similar to USM classroom at Valley State Prison for Women. The name of the Freedom to Choose workshop really derives from the work of Viktor Frankl and the book he wrote called Man's Search for Meaning. Viktor Frankl was a Jewish psychiatrist living in Germany just before World War II started. The secret police came to his house and he was taken to a concentration camp. And when he got there, he noticed that everything, everything can be taken from a person except one essential freedom. There's one freedom that can never be taken from anybody and that's the freedom to choose one's attitude regardless of circumstances. We design processes 
where people can talk about their hurts, but because the overall context of what they're involved in is loving, healing goes on in the classroom. My daughter's boyfriend was shot and killed in front of her last August. He died in her arms. And I haven't had a chance to be with my daughter to really see where she's at. I think she's using drugs. And I'm almost 100% sure because, of course, I know the signs. And I'm trying to choose ways now how to get at her, how to get under her skin, how for her to relate to me. Because if I don't, she's either going to end up dead or she's going to end up right here. When I was a little girl, my older cousin was living with us at the time. He called me into his room and laid me on my, and laid me on my, uh, on my back and um, on the floor. I didn't know about sex and stuff like that at, at a real young age. And I didn't know what he was doing, but I, know, I knew it wasn't right. And he had told me not to tell nobody. And, um, and I told Grandma. And she goes, who have you told? Those were her first words. And so I told nobody. Nobody but you. She says, well, you don't never have to worry about that happening again. She goes, don't you tell anybody. Don't you let Grandpa know, don't you tell anybody. As I got older and stuff, I was real promiscuous. And I felt like, you know, that was the problem and that was the reason why I behaved the way I behaved. I let it out. When the secret did come out, Grandma acted as if she had no idea what I was talking about. So how did that make you feel when she denied Betrayed. 